I'm heading back to Auckland from Thames. Night is falling, the sun is down, it's quarter to seven in the PM. But I just have to interrupt because I've stepped most recently out of the Keith Park Memorial Toilets. No, that's what I have, but the cinema where I watched Rambo, which ran for probably 90 minutes or something, is that right? Probably went from five o'clock until 6.15, 6.30, something like that. 90 minutes, sounds about right. So shorten my carb. Not sweet. And it's just as I said to Daniel, basic potato plot, basic potato character. I'm really disappointed because I'm a Rambo fan. And a little bit like Doctor Who or any number of other things I suppose but particularly like that there's a hint of something amazing about Rambo and Doctor Who that isn't necessarily made explicit something that they try for something that the creators can get wrong but since perhaps they don't quite know what they're doing they can perhaps convince the majority of us who have different ideas by not quite refining the essence but keeping things pretty general and if they do become specific about who the Doctor is or who Rambo is it might disappoint us unless they get it right well they didn't we've been waiting for some kind of resolution some character arc here Clearly in the first wonderful movie we're introduced to Rambo and he is, on the one hand, he's got the lattice of perfect, complete capability when it comes to his craft, war, but when it comes to his, his soul, his initiative, his life, what's he going to do with it, where does he belong, who does he turn to, where does he go? completely uh, off the reservation and there's also this theme of course of <coughs> he's given so much for his country and then his country don't understand him and don't cut him any damn slack and come hard on him in this weird rough dignity culture kind of a way you know you're loitering we won't understand you we'll just smash you interesting okay without exploring that theme too much although I feel like it might be important and there might be some hypocrisy in what happened today in Last Blood which is the fifth in the franchise yep uh, number two uh, what happened he goes back to Vietnam and rescues a bunch of guys and it seems like he's found his purpose now he's rescuing people and he's disgruntled and machine gunning down the goddamn stupid brass who make these stupid mistakes and need to renew their efforts to finish the war and look after those poor old veterans and uh, their filing cabinets get machine gunned and stuff and uh, Ryan Dennehy's uh, equivalent doesn't get his throat cut but gets the shit scared out of him and now be a good boy and make sure that all of the poor guys who um, don't get enough porridge and gruel to eat and grow beards are going to get rescued from Vietnam and they're still there. Some of them are still there and we've got to go and get them. Alright. A little bit contrived maybe but didn't feel like that at the time. Uh, felt pretty good. And he walks off. How will you live John? Day by day. Day by day. Great. And then in Rambo 3, uh, we're off to Afghanistan and we hang out with Osama and stuff and ride along in the ca camels and shooting people and messing things up for the Ruskies and uh, two versus everybody and um, I'm not quite sure what the lesson is there except, you know, we have a good time. We have a good time and we beat people up and, I don't know, saved a village or something? I don't know what they did. I've got no idea what the overarching plot was or who did they help I guess they just helped the poor little Afghans so uh, the moral of the story is probably something like you know we fight just wars 
on the previous occasion where we're kicking some stupid fuckers' asses and they had it coming. Well, it's not like that with the Ruskies and the Afghans and we're going to help them out and do the right thing because it's not that people are being picked on and just for the hell of it and we'll do it too. It's that the right people get picked on at the right time and this isn't the right time so Rambo's going to get you. Something like that. Something like that. And, you know, once again, you're not entirely sure who he is and what he wants to do, but there's a bit of moral certainty this time, like he's sort of, he's learnt from the last movie, he's got a purpose now, he's not like, wander around, who the hell am I guy, he knows what he's about, and he's an ass kicker, and he'll, Team America, fuck yeah, sort things out. That's great, great. And you get to enjoy, of course, uh, all the while, his, uh, without stress and strain of moral uncertainty on this occasion, Rambo 3 is all about uh, he knows what he's doing and you get to enjoy the technical ecstasy of how good he is at killing people. Brilliant. That's an important thing. Then fast forward like 20 years or whatever, we're up to Rambo 4, which I don't believe I watched the movies. I think I saw it on probably DVD. And I enjoyed it. I wanted to watch it and I watched it. Uh, so he's an old guy now, and he's, curiously, he's staying away from America, he's still, he's just living this quiet life on the fringes, mucking about with snakes, being a boatman, uh, catching snakes and taking them to the markets or whatever, and just generally being a badass who lives a quiet life, uh, out in the wilderness, he's sort of found a place where he can be at peace. And then a bunch of Christian missionaries who don't know what the fuck they're doing, get themselves into trouble, um, I guess it introduces now this theme of not listening to Rambo, like he's got the, he's got the capability, he's got the knowledge, he's got the wisdom, and he gives them little speeches and everything, but they don't care, and they get themselves killed, and then instead of saying, told you so, he goes and bails them out and saves them, uh, he gives some moral guidance and moral support to those mercenaries, um, reminding them of who they are because some of them wanted to, I don't know, take the money and run and they disrespected him and he didn't take the bait, he knows who he is and he reminded them, you know, this is what we do guys, I know who you are, might be a different generation or something but you're here to help, you're here to be a hero, it's not about the cash, it's not about saving your ass, it's here, we are the protection, we are case selected on a culture, rescue people and let's get back to work, shall we? and he leads them into battle. So that's cool. Um, basically it's the theme of technical ecstasy again. It's so nice to see him shooting people to pieces and putting arrows in. Of course there's that wonderful scene that we've been begging for where these guys are pushing him around and doing all the work and he... Oh, and they... they there's nothing we can do. People are being tortured and they're just going to watch and uh, keep their heads down and they're armed and they're the great white hero and there's I don't know ten of them or whatever and they got all the guns and then Rambo just comes out with a bow and arrow and sorts things out awesome great it's what you want so you know it's a good plot because it it gratifies us after teasing us for a while it's like come on come on somebody do something um now in the end, it's pretty impressive, it's pretty cool, he goes full circle, he goes back to the States, there's a letterbox with his dad's name on it, and it's like, oh my god, it's like, he's learnt something in this movie, he's realised that, uh, well, it's not just these guys that he was giving this advice to, it was himself, he knows who he is, he's accepting his nature, he's not going to try and run from it, which he was doing in the first movie, and there's a slight discontinuity because he seems to have figured it out pretty well in number two and number three. But uh, maybe there's some sort of a lapse, there's some sort of escapism that comes in after the sort of Team America phase um, between the book and the modern era, sort of this 80s fun with the bandana and shooting everything up and playing with snakes and all that. So he, uh, he drifted back to the old plot line of uncertainty, which is fine, but 
he got over that. He's like, no, nah, all right, I know who I am. Now I got to go back and I got to face my father. I got to go back and uh, deal with whatever it was that made me a soldier in the first place because, you know, a quick, deep insight. It's not, it doesn't start with basic training. There's something in that household environment, that foo, family of origin, that was going on. And the real war, the real battle, the real resolution has to come from facing your family. So that's good. I mean, we don't know what it's going to be. It hasn't happened. There was no reason to expect that Rambo 4 would ever have a sequel. It's going to be the finish. It's going to be the end. And you can just fill in the blanks, which is fine because, you know, we, we know Rambo's great. And if they're not going to tell us how great he is, they can just sort of leave it vague like that. It's okay because we'll, um, we'll come up with it in our own heads like I do. I bet you I'm the only one who thinks, oh, wow, great. He's going to go in there and have a good old chat with his dad and sort things out and get some clarity and closure. And uh, that's what might be in the next movie if there were one. Nah, nah, it ain't. Just as a sideline, I don't care about spoiling movies generally. I don't even really give spoiler warnings. Maybe I um, give a very vague one, but it occurs to me that spoiler warnings are a particularly arse-selected, empathetic, victimhood, culture kind of a thing to do. And they must coincide with the rise of that culture, which I think if I use the Google Ngram generator, I'm going to find to be true. It's a um, phenomenon of the last, shall we say, 10 years. I would like to run that and maybe remove car from the search so it doesn't get confused with other spoilers. And, well, well it'll be interesting to see. That could be a whole history blog post or article. Rather, I want to call it a blog, even though it uses WordPress. Anarchist History might want to go after that one. Okay, so that's fine. We had a little message. We had a, a, a good, important moral there about knowing who you are and it's continuing this important arc. Good job, a real good job. Fun action and rescuing people. And also, this theme was introduced, which was continued in the present film, where old Rambo boy has to deal with these morons and he doesn't have the people skills I mean I don't think people appreciate this the audience just looks at these clots who won't do what he says straight up and they're thinking oh why don't you listen to him he's Rambo well they don't know that he's the hero of this movie they just think he's like some miserable guy some old dude who is low status and spends his time, you know, making minimum wage skinning snakes or some bloody thing for some Asian boss. Or he's um, some random dude on a horse. What does he know? He shows up. We're, we're talking about Rambo 5 now. Uh, why should you listen to him? I mean, the very first few minutes of the movie, which I wasn't even sure the movie had started. I thought, is this another trailer? then I remembered the promo pictures and Rambo was wearing a fedora or something and I thought, oh, it's probably him, we've probably begun. I don't know if that was my bad or like how much attention do you have to pay to know that your film has begun. Seems a little bit of a mistake. Anyway, no big deal, figured it out. The trouble is, the guy's wife is dead and a flash flood's coming. If you listen to Rambo, you live. This guy wants to go and find his wife. He doesn't accept Rambo at his word that the woman's dead. And I found him convincing. Of course, I had seen the body. This guy, he doesn't want to give up on his wife yet. And he doesn't want to trust Rambo's judgment that the flash flood's coming. And you've got like 30 seconds to not die. So he wanders off and gets flash flooded to death. Whereas the chick that he's with, for whatever reason, she does listen. Gets lashed to a rock downstream of the oncoming rapids and they get out which is great cool little typical rambo you know competency in nature kind of a gig look at this dude he knows how to survive he can take quick deliberate direct action of course he feels some remorse because the other guy didn't make it and the woman was already dead when he arrived and there's a fair bit of time spent 
in the first few minutes of the movie talking about how he tried and don't feel bad and you know the the girl the, her parent and I don't know the sheriff or something says thank you which for one thing the modern sheriff's department they're a little iffy about him but overall they've learnt to accept him instead of chasing him out of town or something he's uh, a valued member of their community thanks again John so okay that's nice now I guess they didn't want to dwell on that but that was a missed opportunity because they could have developed that a little bit more it could have been a little bit of Brian Dennehy uh, kind of angry sheriff guy uh, tries to get rid of him or hates him or something and that old energy could have come up and pushed Rambo or something try to kick him out or something and maybe another sheriff or something comes along and says absolutely not are you kidding me this guy's a Vietnam veteran treat him with respect he knows what he is about he's helped us many times he knows this area no he just said no it's all right he's a good tracker or whatever thanks again it's like whatever uh, I, I wasn't thinking about it too hard at that point but I, I did think wouldn't it be nice if the sheriff said something like um, well if there was an exchange where Rambo had had a professional discussion with the guy it was like they didn't even know that he'd rescued the girl they didn't even know what happened I felt like somebody should have said um, you know there were three missing I found one, she was dead already, I don't know if you're going to find the body, it wasn't the flood that killed her, she's already dead, and then there's another guy who wandered off, pretty sure he's going to die, oh yep, I can identify that body, that's the guy, you know, this is how it went down, so that, I don't know, you can alert the media and alert the families, because I'm aware of what the scenario is, let's have a little debrief, I don't know, something like that, and within that, uh, <coughs> the sequence I mentioned could have been pulled off by some smart writing. So we could have um, we could have had a nice little full circle kind of a thing there. If it was done well, good acting, good writing, it doesn't have to take long. And you could have had a great Rambo 1 marked off, tick, and moved on. Anyway, what happens next is basically we have minimal time given to talking about what happened to Rambo's dad, what happened between them. Who are these people who live on Rambo Ranch? And why do you like them anyway? But, oh, you get the idea. Some ways or other, they're a family. They hang out together. And then what we have is, spontaneously enough, the girl wants to find her daddy. And she's hell-bent on it. And she's got a bee in her bonnet. Uh, Rambo basically says, just promise me that you'll fight this initiative of yours. Give it a bit more time. Um, use willpower to cold turkey quit this heroin slash cocaine slash nicotine addiction that's clearly got you animated and motivated and you've gone to this trouble of tracking him down and you're on the verge of going and visiting him. Yeah, just put that out of mind. Will you do that for me? Yeah, okay, Rambo. And she didn't. Next minute she's fighting with her mother. And again, the mother's like, no, 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 no. Wah, 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 wah. Do as you're told. No, 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 no. We will not talk about this again. How dare you? Why would you think that? Lecture, lecture, blah, blah, blah. So the girl's like, okay. And of course, again, next minute, she's like, ah, uh, nah. I can't force this down. This this hasn't, this hasn't changed my mind. This hasn't uh, dealt with any of my inner pain or what's motivating me. I want closure on my daddy. And a couple of old people telling me, don't worry about it, or lecturing me or badgering me, doesn't mean a damn thing. I think I'll just drive to Mexico as a single female and start shaking some trees. So off she goes. So bloody bad parenting opportunity, right? She does not get to do this with protection. She doesn't get to do this with good advice. She doesn't get to do this with uh, assistance. And in particular, she's got no contact person at home to say, um, where are you? We don't know where you are. Um, there's nobody to say that you're missing. There's nobody who's 
going to come and get you, there's no search party, it's like going into the forest, into the New Zealand bush without having a contact person. Like she's got no support at all. Nobody to say, hey I'll come with you, or here's a map, or here's a good timeline, or here's some money, here's some weaponry, here's some advice. None of that, she's all alone. That's because she tried to reach out to the parents, which is nice. So she knew, she had it in her head that it was worth asking, so they must have done something right, but they shot it down. So that didn't mean that she wouldn't do it, that just meant she'll be doing it without you. And so there was a real lack of connection, it was a bad parenting scenario where they didn't trust and love each other enough to do this together. which is a convenient plot device, but disappointed me. Um, the judgment, like, as the movie showed, and is, is perfectly reasonable, Rambo's judgment was right. She was going into the frying pan and then into the fire, and she should not have proceeded. It was a big, bloody mistake. That's not the point. The point is, he didn't have the people skills to convince her of that. I was half thinking in the kitchen when the mother was yelling, when he told her to back off, I honestly thought he might say something like he said to the, um, you know, we're going up river because of you, like he did to that Christian chick. She wanted to go into Mexico, or, sorry, uh, what was it, Cambodia in this situation. I want to call it something starting with B for some reason. I think that's what Cambodia is called now. Borneo? Same thing, right? Yeah, Borneo is the old name. I, I want to call it Borneo for some reason, maybe because, yeah. Uh, the same way I want to call Zimbabwe Rhodesia and he could see that she was hell bent on it and he's like okay so what you want when you change your mind we're going back well he didn't do that for this girl I don't know why it's like he's got less emotional intelligence this time I mean if arguably if he'd done it right if he'd done it with her they could have done this in a safe way or if you're not going to do it then try and talk her out of it but no there's a complete disconnect as if he's lost something, something that he had, some kind of respect that he had for another person, for a woman, is gone now. And I even half expected when she drove away and he was mucking about with his horses, I thought, come on Rambo, you can read people, can't you? You understand what's going on here, you've seen that she's on a quest. Why don't you, I don't know, you haven't figured it out, why don't you suddenly go, Great Scott, Marty! Jump on the horse, jump over the fence, and suddenly gallop in front of the car as it's speeding down the road, and <laughs> tag along. Nah, didn't figure out a goddamn thing. Next thing you know, uh, message, I don't know, somehow this girl who sold her out just thought it would also be nice to contact the family and let them know. Is that right? Yep, that's right. Girl who sold her out is going to contact them and let them know, oh, by the way, uh, it's funny, your daughter seems to be dead, oh well. So that's how the news got through, again, kind of lazy writing, but whatever, not a big deal. Um, so he goes to rescue her, okay. Then we have this major problem, there's a whole lot of gratuitous violence, which I suppose is alright, seems a little OTT, but what I thought was that he was in control of the situation and he had some amazing tactics and he would take him down. Now of course I knew that there has to be an initial failure so that he can overcome and triumph anyway. But uh, your job as a writer and as a director is to make, make me buy it. And did they not? Did they not? <coughs> Instead what happens is Rambo walks into a complete hornet's nest of bad hombres. I can't understand why they've got that many guards, but for some reason, I don't know, 50 guys or something, just sort of assemble around him and everyone pulls a gun as if they're in some kind of a, um, I don't know, it's like Blazing Saddles or something, it's like a Steve Martin movie or something. And everyone points the gun at him and it's almost comical. But he's completely overwhelmed, and I'm disappointed. I'm thinking, okay, possibility A, he's going to beat the shit out of 50 people because of his 
badass combat skills, <clears throat> pop a few more old man pills, and uh, yeah, get out of the get out of get out of trouble. Like he's going to get out of there with his life. He's going to escape by beating them up or something, and barely escape. Uh, but he didn't. He just got the shit beat out of him. And they let him live. What? I just. I mean, you're old, but you're wise, right? I thought that tactically speaking, he could do better. But he couldn't. It's bizarre. Okay, so then what happens is he's luckily rescued and uh, given free medical equipment from someone who uh, is a, just like an investigative reporter who apparently admires his rib breaking skills and watched him be violent. I guess we're supposed to believe that they're kindreds and like she sensed that he's on a revenge quest. <coughs> just like her. But he's not using a pen and so she chips in gets him better four days later he's back to beat everyone up again he's like a moth to the flame uh, this time he just won it's, it's ridiculous somehow or other this time he just goes in there kicks the door down and gets the girl out which is uh, it's dumb like I thought maybe we could have a cool sort of Arnold Schwarzenegger the Nigger, nigger, Schwarzenegger, uh, commando moment where he breaks into the, um, the, what do you call it, the military supply store or whatever, I don't know, it doesn't quite bring, I don't want to call it hunting store or military supply store, doesn't sound right either, but whatever the hell it was, and uh, gets the vest and the face paint and the rocket launcher and everything under the sun, it's a beautiful sequence, beautiful little montage of him zipping up his pants and stuff, <coughs> going shopping, uh, but no, it just somehow or other requires a claw hammer, says, hey, can I see some young girls, and a guy turns his back on him and says, yeah, come on this way, next minute he's claw hammering everyone, and again, he lacks the people skills, if it could be done at all, to rescue the girls, they don't want to leave, but he grabs the girl that he wants, and instead of going to a hospital, instead of perhaps being prepared in that way, or going back to the journalist, who seems to have excellent access to physicians, he decides to drive all the way back to the United States. Theoretically, he's going to make an unofficial border crossing, which is stupid and dangerous, with this girl who needs medical attention. Or maybe he thought he would go through the official border post and not raise any questions about how come there's a heavily drugged, unconscious girl with prick marks all up her arm and, you know, stitches and scars all over her. Oh, what the hell, go ahead, let us just stamp your passport. Thanks, Mr. Rambo. So, just a bit of a hole there. But the bigger hole is, why didn't you give her immediate medical attention? Why didn't you stop and give her some electrolytes? Why didn't you stabilize her before you just set off on this huge cross-country quest? That didn't make any sense. She could die. She died. So he takes her body back to the States. Uh, I guess he did that off-road too. Because you can't get that through the official checkpoints. <coughs> That's why you'd need to build a wall, Trump. Uh, what he actually did, a little bit strange, not to get too picky. He just drove through some sort of a barbed wire fence and just collapsed. I'm pretty sure if I did that, I'd have barbed wire in my tires and barbed wire being wrapped around my axle, and I'd be sorry I'd done it, and if I kept driving I'd have to get out there for hours with bloody, um, a pair of metal clippers, and, oh, what a mess, I don't know, maybe it's just making, giving some sort of a throwing a bone to all those who want a better border, didn't really impress me, but okay, if that's what you want to use your movie for, so anyway, that was a complete clusterfuck. And then, then he, uh, he knows they're going to come for him, he's going to insure it, so he sets up his farm as a giant death trap. He goes back, he kicks a bit of ass, and they come for him. Alright, this is a real big movie review, right? How long have I been doing this for? Half an hour, damn it. <laughs> oh dear. Well, when in life am I ever going to review any Rambo movies if it's not right now. 
So, <coughs> what happens next? Naturally, predictably, a great convoy of angry uh, Mexicans somehow or other spend a lot of time and effort getting permission or making arrangements to cross the border. Eh, kind of a plot hole there, but I guess you can just assume that they've got connections and they can do this sort of shit if they want to with impunity. I presume it costs them a bit, but they're so cross with this guy, and you're thinking that they're, I don't know, they've got some kind of a big deal going down, and they want to not be insulted, so it's important to these guys. They're not just some bunch of banditos. They've got hookups, and it's really important to their future business prospects. This has been established at the start of the movie just for this purpose. Uh, that They're the kind of guys who've got something to gain from sending a whole goddamn platoon against old man. So they do. Now, I guess they covered bases, the director, by saying he wants revenge. Rambo just wants revenge, which is a problem for me. But if he didn't want revenge, if he just wanted to get the job done, <coughs> I was just thinking in the moments where they were driving, what I would have done is I would have put some lovely forklifted some big concrete barriers into place either side of the road. That would have been my uh, ambush point. I would have rocket launched the first car and the last car and made a lovely little tight kill box of flame and death so I could take all these guys out. Rambo didn't choose to do that. Uh, and I can't help thinking, you know, that would have been the better way to go and you could have you could have had a few guys to torture if that's what you wanted to do. You could have made them suffer, but no, they wanted to do it the other way. And uh, I'll come back to the revenge thing, which disappoints me because that's what we had instead of a plot arc. Instead of having Rambo finally realizes who he is and what you got to do, and he's putting his sort of his old pensioner years, his retirement years, into bringing down, I don't know, the whole sex trafficking trade of Mexico, or some great achievement. He's, he's putting it behind him, he's rescuing people, he's moving on with life, he's going for something nice. No, nah, it's just this lame sort of a speech about how nothing's ever done, nothing's done, doesn't finish, and I want revenge, and I want to make them feel my grief. <coughs> which, psychologically speaking, is right on the money. Um, that's what revenge is about. You don't want to process your grief. You're not going to feel your feelings. Revenge is the fantasy that you can make the other guy feel it for you. And that, that will be satisfactory. Of course it won't be. But, uh... Even, even in 2019, old Rambo apparently hasn't seen enough movies or consumed enough wisdom to know that that's a waste of fucking time. And you'd think that a guy like him would have learned that one by now. I really think that uh, Rambo in the first movie, or the second, or the third, or certainly by the fourth, had that one figured out. So this is disappointing. I mean, I know they hurt him, but... Oh, I also know that he had to make them pay. But the fact that he... He blew his entire life up to do it. I didn't like that. The farm, gone. Uh, he's pretty much going to go to jail now or something. If he's alive at all. I mean, didn't he kill himself? The movie finishes with him on a rocking chair and the sun setting. S semi un indecisive, but I think we all know there's not going to be another film, so that's the big finish. He just let rage and revenge consume him. For what? A bunch of scum suckers so that he could knife somebody's heart out? That is petty and pathetic. And the speech that went with it. Oh god, what did he say? Some shit about the only family he's ever known. And he wasn't talking about his Vietnam friends, which is slightly odd. And if he's going to talk like that, then I think we needed to see a little bit more than a montage of photos about how much he loves these guys. Uh, 
quick sidetrack, like we didn't hear enough about this family and how they got to be with him. And I didn't even believe, because I, I think Stallone is a genius. I thought, he's going to do something better than this. When I saw the girl's dad suddenly change from being Mr. Friendly at the door to, I looked at you when you were a kid and I realized I didn't feel anything. I didn't want you. I'm like, you're kidding. <coughs> that's it. That's the closure she was looking for. That's this whole character of the dad. That's the backstory that she was rescued from. It's as dumb as that. I did not believe it. What I believed was that there was some shit going down and the father really loved the daughter and he wanted her out of his life. He was trying to protect her. If people knew who she was, she would be in danger. And that would be the danger that she got into that she needed to be rescued from. So he was trying to do this noble lie of just saying, you know, get out of here. Which we've seen multiple times. I mean, oh, can I think of an example of that? I mean, it's not that sophisticated. But you could have, with some good writing, judged it up. And it would have been a hell of a lot more sophisticated than what we actually ended up with. Um, I can't think of an example right now, but you get what I mean. I mean, how many times in a movie have we seen somebody um, pretending not to like somebody because they've decided it's for the best that they should get out of here? Uh, lots of times. So many times I can't even think of one example. Anyway, if, uh, if I had pause and uh, had a little make a coffee or um, go for a walk, that's when I uh, can enhance my memory skills and retrieve this sort of information. So, uh, yeah, if this becomes a, um, an article, a three-part article for the New York Times or something, we'll put that in at this point. All right, so anyway, that's all there is to it, and he's throwing his life away just to piss off this stupid Mexican. Okay, another pearl lot hole. Instead of doing what I suggested, he does indeed set up a giant death trap of his farm, and like complete morons, even though these guys seem to be militaristically trained, they just go for it. I mean, after the first round bail blows up, if it did at all, after the first uh, IED blows up one of their cars and it somersaults through the air, maybe they should have caught on to the fact that, oh, this dude that we were um, hoping to ambush in his home on his rocking chair was expecting us and he's ready and he's not that much of a fucking idiot after all. No, they don't. They just carry on. And people are sent into the barn and it's like, God, he just booby-trapped a goddamn paddock. You think he can't booby trap a barn? Yeah, we don't think that. We don't even think he can booby trap a tunnel. So they go into his tunnels. <laughs> what are they doing that for? It's insane. I mean, it's like, I, I was looking for some sort of Vietnam kind of crossover here. Like, uh, I don't, uh, because, you know, the Viet Cong had all these amazing tunnels full of improvised booby traps and going in there was death, right? Absolutely insane. Well, here we are. We've got all of these death traps and the viewer knows this because we've had a montage, but even so, I mean, these guys, they needed to pull back, they needed to take their time, they're out in the whoop whoops or something. I guess from a certain point of view they might be concerned that the U.S. forces are going to stop them and detain them, and that'll be the end of their sex trafficking empire. But, oh my God, they just, basically, they just saw a gin trap and put their face in it and died horribly, repeatedly, down to the last man. Uh, I was slightly confused about why, having killed them slowly, such as setting them on fire or skewering them. Old Rambo felt the need to shoot them too. But he did. My best explanation is he wanted some quiet. 
bit of peace and quiet so he can hear the bad guys instead of all the screams that there would be. Personally, if I'm on a revenge move, um, if I'm on a revenge fantasy, uh, it seems to me that letting people burn to death and scream is great. Great for morale, right? Let everyone hear it and let those suffering enjoy, so to speak, their uh, wages of their sin. And if you're not going to do that, what's the goddamn point? Why don't you just shoot them in the head in the first place if you're going to do that? I don't understand. Maybe eh, he's trying to protect, be apologetic for Rambo. Maybe he just wants to be the sort of symphony orchestra guy. And he just wants a quick little scream before you die. Some concentrated agony. Oh shit. I've got spikes in my chest, and then turn it off. Maybe. Maybe, 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 maybe. Doesn't doesn't quite seem satisfactory. I'm not sure how the viewer would take it if, you know, if the audience had to put up with all of these guys crying and screaming and moaning and all the crunching sounds and the staggering and that sort of thing. Uh, maybe we wouldn't would lose our empathy for Rambo because we'd see what a meanie he was, but instead he's putting them out of their misery. Mm. Seems like a problem to me. Anyway, even so, it comes down to it, and you get the last bad guy, who was still armed, I thought, even though he's skewered to the wall of the barn by arrows totally mastered of course he is you're on enemy territory home field advantage times a billion uh, disappointing uh, it's like I don't know I, I felt like then maybe something could have been said about how well trained the guy was or don't mess with Vietnam veterans or Goodness knows. But, yeah, that's my problem. I mean, when Arnold Schwarzenegger and his friend defend themselves in the semi desert environment and Conan the Barbarian, you're on their side. It's two versus many. And they're under siege and they've set something up it's improv this is Rambo's farm he's been building these tunnels for like decades or something he's got all the equipment in the world if he doesn't he can go to the shop and buy more he's got a forge for Christ's sake <laughs> it's like there's just no question he's gonna be fine it's not like the A team and they've got one montage to create some kind of Trojan horse escape strategy or it's not like MacGyver, who, while you play the theme, he's going to turn some bubble gum and an ice pick into an aircraft and fly out of there. It's it's a Vietnam trained veteran who's established as a pro at this sort of stuff, with every resource under the sun. And you poor little illegal immigrants visiting with your machine guns and your cars are coming in unprepared, uncoordinated. It's insane. And I had no doubt that he would kick their asses, and if he didn't, that'd be a problem. So that's a big, that's a major, a major plot hole. I mean, give me a challenge. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how to save that situation. I mean, if you want it, if you want to do something where <coughs> straining my voice from using speaking in this voice, I'm trying to project my voice so that it makes a good recording. I often do that, and I end up um, throttling myself. Anyway, I I can do it though. I'll survive. I think if I did it more often, I'd be more practiced and it wouldn't happen, but I don't tend to spend half an hour or even ten minutes hard out talking like this. 
this is my show voice or something. Okay, okay, okay. So, um, if you want it, if you want the sequence, which, yeah, fair enough, I suppose, if you feel the need to have some sort of uh, home invasion scenario where Rambo takes them on and kills them, that's fine, but it's it's got to be higher stakes, and it's got to be a little bit in doubt. It's got to be, can this work? Can he survive? Uh, can he get to his resources and time? There's no question of that. He's already there, he's waiting, he's got every opportunity. He set up every post, and it's just like dominoes falling down. He puts his rifle up there on a couple of nails, he weakens this way, um, uh, tunnel foundation thing. Uh, these guys, it's like he's writing a computer program, and these guys are, um, these guys are just variables in the code, and he just hits enter, and they die. So it's dumb. Um, the only concession was that he gets shot a couple of times, so we're supposed to think he's going to die or whatever, but nobody's in any doubt that he's going to pull this one off. And uh, sure enough, oh, he kills everybody except for one who staggers out. He blows up all of his tunnels and makes his farm look like shit. And then the dude gets skewered to the wall. And I thought, you know, before he dies... Rambo needs to say something real good. He needs to have some sort of a speech. He needs to somehow connect with this guy in a malicious way. And the evil Mexican man's, instead of just saying, fuck you, he's going to break down or something. I mean, it's a lot to put onto this one moment that couldn't be done. But um, And if they tried, they would have failed. But this is what they set themselves up for. But he would have had to say something amazing, something like, God damn it, women are people too. Oh no, what have I done? I've spent all my time being a really naughty man and bringing these innocent women and making uh, prostitutes out of them. Now I finally see what it feels like. Oh my God. <coughs> Forgive me, God. Send me to... Send me to hell, I deserve it. I, I had no idea what it felt like to be um, penetrated against my will. Fuck, I see my point. God damn it, Rambo. God damn it, Rambo. Yeah. See what I mean? It's like, there's no way to spin that, right? But that's the, that's the sort of thing you need to do to make it satisfying. It's not, though, it's just pigs to the slaughter. It's just kill you. It's this graphic shit about pulling out his beating heart and showing it to him before he dies. Which, who does that gratify? Just a bunch of, um, on a culture, down-regulated morons are going to go, rrr, 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 Oh, he's so badass. Oh, this reminds me of the time where Patrick Swayze pulled out that guy's throat. Remember that? Oh, I love it. Okay. And then they, um, have some aftermatch talk about, is that anatomically possible, do you think? Oh, well, yeah, it could be. That's the sort of fun things those morons talk about. And that's who this movie is for? I thought it was for me. I thought it was for people who are genuine Rambo fans. Not this gratuitous crap. That was it. Now, okay. And then the old man staggers off to his literal... Literally staggers off to his rocking chair. And rocks in it. And then, as I've already said, gives this dumbass speech about... Um, the only family he's ever known... And he will fight so that they're remembered forever. Well, he didn't fight so that they'd be remembered forever. In fact, he nearly got himself killed. Uh, is this some sort of weird orchestrated shit that they're supposed to be remembered because they vengeance was done in her name? Is that it? I mean, I didn't get that kind of a sense. Uh, is that the idea that some third party is going to discover the scene of this massacre... And they're going to, instead of calling it the Mexican Massacre or Rambo's Last Stand, they're all going to say, um, that was for the girl. This was the girl's tribute or her, 
her funeral message or something. Is, it, is this is some sort of... Is, is he serious? Is this an exercise in marketing and branding and um, some kind of history writing? He's trying to control the message and make sure people think the way he wants them to think. He wants the tribute to this girl that he loved not to be something like her achievements or or her, her, her horse riding or her gravestone or, I don't know, a scholarship in her name or God knows what. No, uh, she'll be remembered as the, the girl who got raped and killed and the bad guys got punished for it. It's a pretty disgusting, murderous, paint your memorial with blood and gore kind of a message. But, like, that that's it. It's almost like they couldn't figure out what to say, which has never been a problem before, like not in the last movie. So he just he said this. So as I say, so many missed opportunities for what you could have done with this film. I... Maybe I'm just better at plot, or maybe it's easy to do this in hindsight, to talk about what could have been done, but still I could have given you hindsight just by watching the first four movies and come up with the same result. I mean, look at what I said about Terminator, which uh, comes out at the end of next month, and I've, I've already done a review where I talk about what should happen in a future Terminator movie. It doesn't look at all as if that's going to be happening, sadly. <sighs> Uh, anyway, perhaps I should revive that up. It's crossed my mind. Maybe I can put that video out, just the um, that part of it, because I think it's a very important message, and it's timely. Anywho, 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 that's Rambo. That's it. Uh, it only took me... Hey, man, it took them, like, when did the first movie come out? Should we say the mid-80s? So, approximately 40 years. That's only taken me 52 minutes to sum the whole thing up. The, uh, the major take-home message is it's a missed opportunity to give us a quality movie that made sense, that had a good plot, that held together, instead of this crazy bloody moth to the flame, whose tactic just seemed to be run at people, get beaten up, heal, run at them again with a claw hammer, hey it worked that time, and generally just blunder through. Uh, and then set up a death trap of your own and the bad guys blunder into that. I mean, it's just all so brain dead. And Christ, I would quite have liked to enjoy some asymmetrical combat that involved intelligence. Like, let's see... Rambo be clever to take these guys down, and I didn't feel like it was clever just because he had such an overwhelming advantage, or let's see these guys be clever, let's see them you know, I, I feel like I've seen this in a movie before um, so maybe you know, the henchmen are a bunch of dummies but um, the bad guy naughty Mexican guy you know, he, he didn't have the brains of the bloody the villain from Crocodile Dundee too, frankly. He didn't have this sort of, I like how this man thinks, or we will smoke him out, or we will not fall for his tricks. And, you know, not walking across tripwires, not... No, not, um... walking into Mick Dundee's goddamn death trap. That's an important <laughs> similarity to make, because it's disappointing. Because nobody thinks that Crocodile Dundee 2 was as good or deserves a high ranking. I mean, I liked it. I think it was pretty well done. And frankly, Rambo was not as good as that. The villain is not as good as that. And and you wouldn't expect much uh, character. You've never seen this villain from Croc Dundee 2 again. He's no um, Tally Savalas or something. Who the fuck knows who he is? He's just a one-off, right? But he carried that movie. He carried... Well, I shouldn't say he carried the movie. Uh, but he carried 
the villainous part of that movie perfectly well. He was scary, he was mean, he was well-dressed and articulate. He was better than uh, the Bond villain who also appeared in Goonies, which we watched last night, or I did some of it. But uh, I discovered that, once again, it sucks. <laughs> my assessment all my life has always been that. I've never enjoyed it. There's a few. I like uh, some of the... What's his name? Sean Austin. I like some of his moments. Some of his little speechy things. But um, overall, blah, never liked it. And, of course, it's always been a turn-off because of the ugliness of old Bullet Head and Fat Kid. It's like, I can't... I can't... Um, uh, I can't stomach it. It's just so repulsive. So much distaste gets triggered. And I worry that I'm going to have to see another scene with those despicable people. And I can't recover from the last one long enough to get into what's coming either. So it's just hugely destabilizing. Anyway. <coughs> uh, that was the major fuck up. And so it's a... It's a plot problem, it's a villain problem, but it's also a character problem, because as I said in the first place, Doctor Who, Rambo, there's always been this hint of something excellent. This time, it, not only was it not even hinted at, I mean, not only was it not consummated, it wasn't hinted at. The, the great wish is that they would have finally nailed it, they would have revealed his character, they would have shown us who he's been all along. He would have reached the self-discovery. He would have known enlightenment. He didn't have to levitate or anything or do some sort of neo-dodge bullet shit. He just had to be his best possible self, resolving all of these conflicts that he had in the past. He's come full circle like he was supposed to, and he knows who he is, and he doesn't fuck things up. Um, which would have involved, by the way, not falling into this stupid parent trap which he did. Uh, I mean, I could rewrite it so that he didn't. But I don't know if it's, you know, probably should wrap up this, but I don't know. What he could have done instead is uh, he could have shown forbearance. He could have, well, I already told you, didn't I? What he could have done, which would have been brilliant, would have been just to, at bare minimal, do for this daughter what he did for the missionary girl in Borneo. Uh, would have been fine. That would have been emotional intelligence. That would have, you know, we would have all been saying, what are you doing? Don't go to Mexico. No. Like, they could have made it very clear that it was death and it was destruction and she was going to get her head shot off and it could have been one of those great scenarios where you, um, you get to see Rambo being listened to instead of ignored and he could have been vindicated. Or he could have learnt to speak up instead of mumbling and groaning things. He could have... I don't know. It seems unlikely, but he perhaps he could have articulated exactly... No, he wouldn't be an articulate guy. Even though he does periodically spout these amazing speeches, right? <laughs> Which is... Okay, so that's part of him too. You just like speak from the heart and it's like some sort of national anthem. But he could have found a way to convey what he needed to convey so that people listened to him and instead of um, leaving his protection and walking in face first into a flash flood, he could have said something or done something to relate to his fellow man so that they would treat him well. Because that's the big Rambo thing. That's his... That's what they fucked up. That's the essence that I really wanted to see. You know what? That's what it is. That's what's missing. That's the major failed opportunity. Apart from the plot holes, apart from the shit plot and the shit characters, what I really wanted to see, what Rambo deserves, is to be understood. Right? Because he is a good guy. He's a damn good guy. He is competent. He is capable. He is a useful, productive member of society who has not only earned his stripes but is valuable to you now and in the future and that's always made abundantly clear when it comes to practical matters he's the best at what he does he's Wolverine 
they understood that from experience at the beginning of the movie because they knew he was a good tracker and they knew that he could get the job done and he could do amazing things. He could walk up walls. He could keep going when everyone else is bugging out and he could save people. He could rescue them. Uh, the particular problem in the first movie too is all of that. That what you've got before you is... I think he's even decorated. I think he's got like more medals. You wouldn't believe how many medals this son of a bitch has got. I might be thinking of Indiana Jones, but I, I don't think so. I think he's got like 12 purple hearts or something. He's decorated. He's a genius. He's amazing. And that was uh, that was part of the gratification that came from uh, Colonel Colonel Superior dude, who we had in the first and second movies, because he would chip in. And he'd be like, he'd be on the other shoulder to Brian Dennehy, and he'd be going, "Don't you understand who this guy is? He can eat things that would make a Billy do Billy go puke. He's amazing. He's fantastic. He's the greatest secret agent we ever made. I taught him everything I know, and then he found out some more. This guy's incredible. You, he doesn't want to be found. He won't be found. He can throw a knife a hundred k's away, and it'll hit you in the ass. You know." Perfect expert marksman, tactical, strategic mastermind. So, you know, he's talking him up all the time and it's quite enjoyable. Because Rambo doesn't do that, he's just quiet, silent, deadly dude. Okay. That's a problem though, because Rambo couldn't speak up for himself all this time, you see? Everything could have been just fucking sorted out if Rambo could break through that barrier. If he could have, you know, really hard to talk to Brian Denner, he, he's a cunt. <laughs> Excuse my language. But if Rambo could have sat down and had a coffee with Brian Denner, he, and I don't know, the first scene of the movie or something, and reached Brian Denner, he, and Brian Denner, he could have, like, gotten it through his thick skull, just who Rambo was, oh my god, that would have been so satisfying. You don't have to go on a manhunt. You're just like, oh my god, oh, thanks, Rambo. Why don't you come and sleep in my spare room or, um, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, here's, here's a hundred bucks or something. Uh, let me put you in touch with the VA. I don't know. You know, thanks for passing through our town, man. This is great. Can you sign my, sign my tummy? Uh, can you sign my, my rifle? R-I-M-B-O, yeah. Just make it out to, um, Police Chief Wiggum. That'd be great. That'd be great. <coughs> He'd buy He'd be like the littlest hobo or something. He'd be recognized. I mean, you could have a movie or something, a whole movie, where he just shows up like Superman. It's like, hey, it's Rambo! Instead of, ah, get out of here, you drifter. Now, that's the big problem. That's the big problem. Rambo can't do that. Uh, and every time, like, he's being disrespected, all he knows how to do is keep a lid on it and just keep this forbearance. What would be quite nice is instead of being Boatman who gets picked on if he could use peaceful non-violent means to paint a picture of himself as a capable competent person instead of people picking on him and pushing him too far until he finally explodes and starts breaking necks that's the Rambo arc that we didn't get now in this situation again this could have all been sorted out if he had done some sort of genius parenting thing and he, you know, so the problem didn't come from his inability to communicate. The problem could have been generated another way. We could have still had a problem, but it wouldn't have been because he wasn't, he was dis disjointed from the girl. But we were introduced to this in the first place. Like, he had no particular way of reaching the man. Uh... All that happened with the girl is, I don't know, somehow he made an offer to them both and she accepted and showed his competence or something, told her what to do and she did it. It wasn't a, a human connection. What a shame. Would have been great if we'd seen a whole new Rambo who had said to them both, like show that it was on the knife's edge, but show that he could, maybe not in the first scene, maybe we'd leave that the same. And you can see that that's his, that's his ongoing problem. 
and so his hero's journey would involve saying something like, you know, I wanted him to say this to his family when he had the opportunities, or say this to the sheriffs, you know, I just don't understand. I could have saved them both, but he turned away. And that could have been discussed, and that could have been the main theme, and what he could have changed, what could have changed in the film, is that he found a way to do that. He could find a way either to stop people from turning away from him and recognize his, uh, his excellence, or somehow to, somehow to, um, to accept some people aren't going to listen to me and it's not my problem something like that like that's the theme that they're grappling with and fumbling quite frankly I mean it was even there with the um, the prostitutes who he tried to free it was like two, three, four in a row he kept on saying you're free, you can go and they're like no I can't because they'll kill me if I try and escape so that was not as frustrating as it could have been, as it should have been, but it was there. So he's the guy who, he's got this, this nasty curse, it's like his, um, his kryptonite is, he's, he's a great guy, he's the guy you want, but nobody can see it, nobody can see it, that's the problem. And the director, and by extension Sylvester Sloan himself, completely missed the fact they completely missed the fact don't they know who he is don't they know what they're supposed to be doing I mean it took me an hour to figure it out right you guys are getting paid 